Chapter 351, Mentor. Their document was very comprehensive, including the date of birth, home address and habits of all 21 targets. On the back, it was also appended with their detailed criminal records. Needless to say, those were all scum of the cultivation community, who committed innumerable murders and robberies. Actually, Sher Shua Jean's original instruction was not to kill everybody, but was, bring them back alive. If you are met with any form of resistance, kill them on the spot. If he had said that killing was permissible if they resisted, then how to define the extent of resistance? How much could they resist before they were allowed to kill them? But Sher Shua Jean's instruction was clear, as long as the target even attempted to resist, they may kill them. In fact, the number of accessories was even more appalling. Those on the list were only the ones who deserved to die. They were all clear that at that time, the Class A aptitude geniuses were at the peak of Class D at most. If they did not use their full force when fighting these malicious enemies, they themselves might be killed as well. After reading through the document, Lu Xu handed it to his group mates. Almost every group was discussing among themselves and making a plan. Now, each clenched their fists and set their jaw, all eager for a fight. Many had never been to a remain or caught a thief before. Thus, when suddenly thrown into such matters, they were all overwhelmed with nervousness, with a tinge of excitement for the anticipation of recognition. The reality was, even the geniuses also needed tangible achievements so as to be qualified for greater power. Honestly, this time, was still an accelerated approach. If one wanted to further his own cultivation techniques, he would still have to make more military contributions with no shortcuts available. In my opinion, we can act like customers and sneak in to have a general idea of the situation in the black market. If possible, we will take them down one by one. What do you think? I agree. Although according to the document, most of them were class E's with very few class D's, they have too many people. It's a good idea to take them one by one. Don't be afraid. Just do it. It's our duty to destroy the criminal's swollen arrogance, they heard someone whispering softly. The entire group froze, looking at one another in confusion. Did you say that? Nope. Did he say that? Nah. The discussion halted. Astounded, everyone in the group turned to see Lu Xu standing behind the group leader. After a few seconds of hesitation, they asked, Why don't you go and discuss with your own group? Lu Xu grinned without even raising his head his eyes glued to the document in their leader's hands, I'm your mentor. Don't push. I'm leaving. When all the other groups were sitting in a circle for discussion, Lu Xu's team were staring quietly at him, who was running around like a bee to mentor other people's work. Cheng Chiuqia was at a complete loss, is he always so, lively? I suppose so, a look of sadness appeared on Chen Zuan's face. At this moment, however, Lu Xu was pondering over something. After looking through every group's documents, he realized that their destinations were all close together, concentrated in the central area. He recorded all information gathered in his phone, so as to have a clearer picture of the locations of those covert black markets, and also too. This time, they were going in the name of law enforcement and their enemies were wicked black market operators. Lu Xu noticed that they had committed many crimes of robbery, so. With no other intentions, Lu Xu was simply curious about what they had stolen. Curiosity was no big deal, right? The geniuses were relatively naive. No one suspected Lu Xu's objective of looking at their documents. After all, different groups had different missions, who would expect that someone would be so free as to pay attention to others' missions? To them, there was no guarantee that they could even complete their own task, so why bother about others? Unlike them, Lu Xu was resolved to become a helpful, forward-thinking youth. Sometimes it was necessary to improve his ideological awareness. Now, everyone's mission objective was carved in Lu Xu's mind. As he was walking to his group, he typed down everything in his phone, just in case his memory might be worn off in the long term. Even his remarkable memory could not warrant that the information would stay in his brain forever.
and Lu Xu was always a meticulous person. According to his memory, their own destination was at the boundary between Shanzhou and Yuzhou, which was actually located in the Tongguan County of Shanzhou. Meanwhile, the other groups were concentrated in Shanzhou, Jianzhou, and Yuzhou. Despite the relative proximity, each state itself was geographically large. After careful consideration, it seemed that he did not have many options available, after all. Still deep in his thought, Chen Zuan interrupted, Brother Xu, could you be our mentor too? Pointless. Lu Xu gave them a grumpy look. At first, Chen Zuan and Cheng Qiuqiu had expected Lu Xu to give some opinions on the group, seeing him busying around and how he was treated differently by the veterans. But in the end, why was he particularly cold to his own group mates? However, they would not think so if they knew what was actually on Lu Xu's mind. In fact, Lu Xu had noticed that his group was the strongest among all. They had Chao Qingxi and himself, while their rivals only consisted of two mid-class Ds and other insignificant ones of class F and E, their victory was apparently certain. According to the information given, their enemies used guns and hunting rifles, which was the only thing to be cautious of. Had he overestimated the local practitioners in the gray area? Lu Xu wondered. In their team, Chao Qingxi was sitting at the side without a single word throughout, but occasionally she would cast a calm look at Lu Xu. On the other hand, Chen Zuan and Cheng Qiuqiao soon became familiar with each other and the remaining three Daoyuan class students who were from different states were strangers among themselves as well. The group allocation seemed completely illogical too, as if the two most powerful students, Lu Xu and Chao Qingxi, were purposely put together. Since Chen Zuan was brought in by Lu Xu, it was only sensible for him to follow Lu Xu, and the rest were not that important. Just now, Lu Xu had also noticed that the two strong students from Qingzhou who were both at the peak of class D were separated into two groups, for the purpose of fairness. So why was his group an anomaly? It was an obvious fact that his group was the strongest. Nia Ting and Shi Xue Jin were clearly aware of that too. Lu Xu and Chao Qingxi had never even had a conversation before. Suddenly, he turned to Chao Qingxi, there may be something wrong with our mission. Be careful. Composed, Chao Qingxi nodded, okay. This was the first sentence Chao Qingxi ever spoke to Lu Xu, but it felt like the two had known each other for a long time. Chapter 352, Free Stewed Noodles Initially, Lu Xu thought that they would be transported to the air by plane or other advanced tools and be released like skydivers but the Heavenly Network did not do so. Eating melon seeds in the lower deck of a tourist coach, Lu Xu sighed, so stingy. Chen Zuan was indignant, agreed. Never have I slept on such a hard seat before. As he was complaining, Chen Zuan suddenly turned to the person beside him, hello? Yes, you. Can you please put your shoes back on? Did you blow up the toilet or something? The smell of your feet is so strong. I'm still eating seeds right here. Then, the middle-aged man reluctantly put on his shoes. At that moment, a spoiled brat ran towards Chen Zuan and stared into his eyes. Before Chen Zuan figured out what he wanted, the brat spat on his melon seeds and ran away. My goodness. Don't try to stop me. Chen Zuan exploded at once, where are the kid's parents? Huh? I demand an explanation. Lu Xu shot him a glance, no one is stopping you. He cast a glimpse at Chao Qingxi, who was resting quietly on the upper deck, and was impressed by her ability to fall asleep in such an unfavorable environment. At that moment, Chen Zuan sat down as well. As a practitioner, he really could not give up his dignity to pick a fight with ordinary people. Seeing that Cheng Chiuqiao was having a video call, Chen Zuan leaned in, why? Talking to your girlfriend? However, on his screen, it was Cheng Chiuqiao's mom and a short-legged Welsh corgi in her arms. Cheng Chiuqiao grinned, Dodo, come and say hi to your brother Chen Zuan. Chen Zuan's face darkened, thought you were talking to your girlfriend. You talked for so long. Cheng Chiuqiao still did not notice what he was talking about. 
Raising his head, he smiled, isn't my dog cute? Chen Zuan asked, are you dating? Hu, shocked at the abrupt turn, Cheng Chiuqiao replied, nope. Now I'm purely focused on my cultivation and studies. Relationships can wait until after graduation. Chen Zuan was frustrated at Cheng Chiuqiao's failure to get his point, if you can't even catch your prey in the zoo, how can you hunt outside? In my opinion, I suggest you keep a girlfriend, not a dog. Meanwhile, the train arrived at the next station. Lu Xu stood up and glanced at him, true. You didn't keep a dog. But how about your girl? Chen Zuan was quiet for a total of 10 seconds, ouch. From Chen Zuan's distress, plus 199. But everyone missed the faint smile on Chao Qingxi's face. Lu Xu gave a pat on the little fatty's shoulder, I'll go for a walk. If I don't make it back in time, you wait for me at Tongguan. Everyone else was stunned. Why would your walk take that long? In that instant, no one knew what Lu Xu was going to do. Meanwhile, in the adjacent carriage, Wang Li, He Xia, Lu Xu Erua and their members were preparing to alight. They had reached their destination, Gongyi County. After a short stop, the train would continue to travel to the west across Yuzhou, passing by Tongguan. Lu Xu only knew the three of them in the team, especially He Xia, the girl with heavy makeup and a branded backpack. Her appearance was hard to forget. Every time Lu Xu saw her, he had the temptation to ask her about her master Xian Zhang and her junior fellow apprentices Zhu Bajia and Sha Wujing. Making herself look like a monkey, what for? However, Lu Xu did not expect that at the current stage, all the black markets were hidden in the countryside of remote counties. It seemed that they were not bold enough to enter cities. But what Lu Xu was not aware was that many illegal dealers were frightened to death in the cities, as they could always be easily found. Lu Xu had shared similar feelings before, for instance, when he was watched by surveillance cameras on the entire street. After that incident, Lu Xu would consciously avoid those cameras when he was on the move and walked out of his opponent's sight. Lu Xu slowly walked behind and followed Wang Li's team, who looked like ordinary university student tourists. Upon exit from the train station, the seven people settled down in a small inn. When Lu Xu was just about to catch up with them, he was stopped by a middle-aged woman, young man, do you want some rest? Lu Xu was unimpressed with her insincerity. The last one who stopped him proposed a folk dance, but this one clearly lacked a competitive edge. Then, the woman continued, it's very comfortable. 50 yuan only, with one bowl of free stewed noodles. Lu Xu was shocked. That was her trump card? The key point was, they had package services now? But the service packaged was so practical, free stewed noodles? In fact, it was Lu Xu who was ignorant of the local culture. It was a common but useful technique used near train stations for attracting workers. In any case, everyone needed food, and in addition to the highly priced noodles, they could also. Sensing that Lu Xu was hesitant, the woman went on with her persuasion, it's nutritious. With quail eggs. Well, Lu Xu cleared his throat, I really don't need it. Thank you. But, my friends need it. Of course, Lu Xu could not let Wang Li's group find out what he was doing. At first, he was worried that the geniuses might head to their destination immediately, but it seemed that they took a more cautious approach. Lu Xu was still figuring out a way to hold Wang Li back and now, it seemed there was an easy way. But as for whether it would work, you would never know unless you gave it a try. Then, he passed 300 yuan to the woman and pulled her aside for a long word. The woman's face lit up, no problem at all. Rest assured that I have other sisters too. My stewed noodles are as wonderful too. We will definitely serve them well. After that, Lu Xu walked away with his spears on his back. His spears were contained within a black leather bag, given to him by his friendly comrades-in-arms in the Heavenly Network. From the outside though, people might be able to tell that there was nothing normal inside. No one could be certain that it was actually a weapon. 
Usually, there were very few surveillance cameras in the counties, and even fewer in poorer areas like Gungi. Now, Lu Xu had to have a chat with those in charge of the black market before Wang Li's team took action. On the other side, someone was knocking on his door when Wang Li was unpacking his luggage. Out of curiosity, he asked, who's that? Room service. Wang Li found it strange. An inn of such a small size had room services? Innocently, he wondered whether it could be room cleaning or something along those lines. Once he opened the door, a middle-aged woman came in with a bowl of stewed noodles in her hands. You must be hungry, young man. Come and have some stewed noodles. Wang Li was indeed hungry. Unsure about what was happening, he placed the bowl on his table and was about to eat, still surprised that the inn actually provided noodles for free. When he raised his head, he realized the woman had no intention to leave. Thus, he asked curiously, Anything else I can help you? It's okay. Eat faster. After you finish the noodles, I'll start my work, the woman grinned. Wang Li nodded, thinking maybe she meant to return the bowl. However, at that moment, he heard his teammate shouting from next door, What are you doing, woman? I'm not that kind of person. Ah. Uh. Then, it was followed by the loud voice of a woman, Do you still intend on running after you eat my noodles? Wang Li looked at the woman in front of him, and returned his gaze to the noodles. To eat or not to eat, that was the question. Chapter 353, Shura Gongyi was heavily industrialized and had always played a pivotal role in the Luocheng Industrial Corridor. Afterwards, due to its rapid economic development, it became independent from Luocheng's administration and fell under the direct jurisdiction of Yuzhou. With a black mask on his face and two spears on his back, Lu Xu walked into a huge yard, which was piled up with car wheels and rusted car frames that resembled a labyrinth. The twisty narrow path between the walls of abandoned cars seemed to lead to nowhere. The black market was far more deserted than Lu Xu had expected. In his imagination, it was a place where people traded herb pills. It could only be attributed to the fact that most practitioners and metahumans were concentrated in the heavenly network, with very few loafing about outside. It was not that the rats in the gray areas were too weak, but that the heavenly network was too special incomparable both locally and abroad. Everything yet to happen was already in Ye Ting and Shi Xuejin's vision. For reasons unknown, Lu Xu vaguely sensed the weight of duty on his shoulder, as a major in the heavenly network, at the dawn of a time of turmoil. Lu Xu smiled and then shook the thought away. Seeing him walking inside, the three people at the door who were playing cards stood up, which faction? Lu Xu hesitated, I'm not from any faction, but I have fifteen magical stones. The three brightened up, go in. A rich one. However, instead of taking the narrow path, Lu Xu leaped onto the highest point of the heap for a bird-eye's view. His breach of the rules shocked everyone in and out of the yard. Those people had been used to posturing. Thus, all past customers had to walk through the maze-like paths. Not all newcomers would be robbed anyway, as they still needed some form of publicity. Looking up at Lu Xu, the three doorkeepers were indignant, come down. Do you not understand the rules? What on earth are you doing here? In other times, he would have to hide, but at that moment, it was completely unnecessary. Lu Xu clearly understood that everyone on the target list had their hands stained with the blood of other practitioners. They clearly deserved to die. Moreover, different from other groups' targets, those in this black market were ganging up with foreign organizations to transfer their stolen goods overseas through a businessman, in the South. It was equivalent to those tomb raiders in the past who sold the national treasures found to other countries. Just three days ago, after getting drunk, this group of people wanted to carry off a young girl from the streets but were fortunately stopped by a local policeman on patrol duty. Even as practitioners and metahumans, they had no guts to defy the security force of the country. But, what would happen to the girl had the policeman not noticed the incident? There was neither surveillance nor the heavenly network. 
Hence, Lu Xu did not plan to waste his time with these dregs of the community, and neither did he intend on a secret attack. In other words, none of them would be spared their lives. To put it bluntly, keeping his trump card a secret every day felt like his hands and feet had been chained up. Why was Lu Xu so ecstatic after reading through the mission information? It was because he no longer had to restrain himself in front of these people. Perched on top, Lu Xu grinned, take all your good stuff out for a look. On the floor, a man with a long scar which seemed jarring on his arm sneered, why should we listen to you? They are in the room. Do you have the guts to take them? Lu Xu frowned, why are you so unfriendly? Is there anything wrong with taking a look in advance at my goods? From Feng Hao's distress, plus 199. From Ron Hengqi's distress, plus 177. From. Never had they expected that this fellow would be so shameless. Who the hell was he? One whispered, could it be he's from the Heavenly Network? Not likely. The Heavenly Network uses swords, but look at the weapons on his back, they look like spears. To those rats in the gray areas, there was a pretty easy way to differentiate the Heavenly Network fighters from the rest. Their standard sword was unmistakably recognizable. Of course, they would not know about Lu Xu's spears, which were a special reward from the network itself. At that moment, the only thought in Feng Hao and the rest's mind was that the kid perching high up was so unruly and impetuous. Suddenly, Lu Xu opened his hand, and over ten magical stones of the size of a thumb were shimmering in the sunlight on his palm. Feng Hao was shocked at once, so many magical stones. Did you rob some heavenly network fighter? We can't take this kind of thing on. Lu Xu was amused at the twist in their attitudes. Generally speaking, they bullied the weak and feared the strong. Rest assured. I have shown my sincerity. So, let me see yours, Lu Xu smiled. But, instead of any impressive weapons, Feng Hao took out a sack of cash. Could it be they had already sold all their stolen goods overseas? Lu Xu frowned, only cash? Then what else do you want, they asked in reply. Show me everything. Let me see if there's anything I can use, Lu Xu grinned. But Feng Hao shook his head, that's all. Show me all my goods. Hurry. Lu Xu became impatient, suspecting that all stolen goods were hidden in the room at the back. Feng Hao was exasperated, what do you mean by your goods? But before they could react, Lu Xu had taken out his phone and opened his digital memorandum, smiling, forget it. Without further ado, I'll now make a roll call. Report when your name is called. Those below exchanged, confused a look, roll call? He thought he was a teacher. Take your weapons. Kill him. Feng Hao immediately turned to the room to get their stolen weapons. As soon as he turned, Lu Xu laughed, I'll take it as you are trying to resist. At that instant, Lu Xu had already taken out his head-twisting gourd from his seal of lands, hanging it at his waist level and calling the names, Feng Hao. With a crisp sound, Feng Hao's head suddenly turned 180 degrees to face Lu Xu, his neck completely broken like a fried dough twist. Lu Xu continued, you are suspected of intentional homicide and treason. Ren Hengqi. Ka. Frightened, Ren Hengqi tried to get his weapons and avenge his comrade. But before he could do so, his neck was also twisted 180 degrees to his back, unable to die in peace. You are suspected of intentional homicide and treason. The rest were almost petrified by terror. Lu Xu's measure was really way too horrifying. But no one could explain what was going on. The young man was like a judge, announcing the names of the dead, and none could ever escape. Earlier on he said that he was doing a roll call. What special power was roll call? The two most powerful people in the entire black market were already dead. If Class D's could not even resist, how could Class F's and E's survive? The young man standing high up suddenly became unfathomable. He had not even used his weapon. All of a sudden, the abandoned yard turned into an inferno, 
everyone's consciousness had been engulfed by terror. It was not that they had never seen bloodshed, but no one had ever treated killing so lightly and easily. The sunlight was sweltering, but it felt icy on the black market men's skin. The head-twisting gourd was not only capable of making a person turn his head, but could also kill. Song In Han Ka Gua Wei Ka For those who had their backs facing Lu Xu and trying to escape, their necks were twisted with no exception. However, some people were too scared to run. They knelt down and pleaded for mercy. Suddenly, they realized that when their names were called, they did not get killed. It was slowly registered that only those who had their backs facing the young man would die. Despite the irresistible force acting on their head, instead of being killed, they would only be compelled to look at the man on top. <laughs> we can kill him. As long as we are facing him, one person released a wild roar. At that moment, they were all eroded by horror. Honestly speaking, they could no longer make discerning choices, but could only boost their own courage. Since they could never escape, all they could do was fight back. After finishing his roll call, Lu Xu put his phone back in his pocket and gazed at the remaining few coming towards him. Suddenly, corpse dog and concealed arrow swooshed out of his celestial map at the same time and delightfully began reaping lives. Class C Flying daggers, seized with terror, a person shouted at once. In a split second, something pierced through his chest. Until then, he still could not understand why a Class C expert from the Heavenly Network would appear here. Those who thought they would survive simply by facing Lu Xu had already jumped out of their skin at the sight of flying daggers. It was a clear indication of a Class C. Furthermore, they had never heard of anyone in Class C who was able to wield two flying daggers concurrently. Lu Xu jumped off from the rusted car tower and sauntered over to the bodies. Looking around, it was probably the inevitable sight of life and death on the journey of cultivation. Sometimes he would wonder what was on Ye Ting's mind after he had killed someone, or Chin Bailey's. But he had never figured it out. In his imagination, he might feel faint-hearted after taking someone's life. In this world, there never existed any real devils, except for the timidness hidden in people's hearts. However, since a long time ago, he was no longer the weak teenage boy who could only keep his sister alive by selling steamed eggs. Gazing at the bright sunlight, Lu Xu wondered, would he regret his path in the future? Probably not. Chapter 354 Harvest Ever since he got the purple golden gourd, Lu Xu had only been using it as a pranking tool. Before this, he never had the will, nor the reason to kill, rendering its new function unexplored. But the situation now was different. Facing him were all people who deserved to die. The use of the head-twisting gourd was that all those who got their name called would turn their head to Lu Xu instantly. Of course, if they were facing each other, no harm would be done. But if the person had their backs facing Lu Xu, the head-twisting gourd would become a dreadful weapon. Moreover, its accuracy was extremely scary. As long as the person's class was below Lu Xu's his chances of survival were zero. As of now, Lu Xu had never been able to see the effect of using it on someone of the same level as him. After he just bought it, he let Lu Xiaoyu try it on himself, and it turned out that he could resist turning his head. But he was one class higher than Lu Xiaoyu at that time. Then he thought it was a hotly discussed topic among the students on how to skip lessons without getting caught, for example, by asking someone to answer for them during the roll call. If he were to become a professor one day, <laughs> those who did not look at him in class. Of course, he would never put it into action. If not, what should he do if a group of his students died in the internet cafe during his lesson time? Lu Xu recovered the sack of cash into his seal of lands first, since it was not the right time for counting money yet. Then, he searched the room for magical weapons with his infallible sensitivity to energy waves. Soon, he discovered eight magical stones, but they were of little use to Lu Xu. At first, he wanted to sell them to the black market, but now since the market had been destroyed, he had no buyers anyway. 
There was another black market at Tongguan, except it was to be a place that would be destroyed as well. It seemed that he had to keep the 23 magical stones with him for the moment. It was such a weird feeling that you had goods, but could not sell them, Lu Xu thought sadly. There were very few spirit qi waves left, except for a weapon similar to the standard of an iron axe from the Beimang remains. Lu Xu had expected to find some mysterious yet powerful weapons here, but he seemed to have overestimated their assets. Suddenly, Lu Xu was stunned for a moment by the last item, which was a delicate, flying dagger-looking object of the size of an index finger. However, there was something black stuck to its surface, covering its original appearance. But as soon as Lu Xu took it with his hand, his purple golden gourd suddenly started trembling, and the small-sized flying dagger, as if being attracted, flew directly into the gourd. What the hell? Using his magical instincts, Lu Xu realized that the dagger was hovering in mid-air in the gourd, as though it was supposed to be there. Then, the gourd displayed something that Lu Xu had never seen before, it was slowly drawing spirit qi from the surroundings. Shortly after, a flame was sparked off inside the gourd and burned the dagger. And unexpectedly, the mysterious black matter on it started to melt. Lu Xu tried to manipulate the dagger but to no avail. Even when he wanted to use the head-twisting gourd, the gourd refused to respond. Lu Xu was shocked for a few minutes, it was getting strange. Could it be the flying dagger and the gourd were supposed to be a pair? And then they were separated? A myth suddenly popped up in his mind, but he could not be sure either. The truth was, the unreliable impression that he had of the head-twisting gourd was unable to twist back at that moment. Never mind, wait until the black matter was burned away, Lu Xu thought as he threw the gourd back into his seal of lands. Instantly, he realized a problem, how could the gourd absorb natural spirit qi in his seal of lands? It was a completely isolated environment. However, at that moment, Lu Xu suddenly sensed his internal celestial powers being slowly siphoned into the gourd, as his seal of lands was held within him. He was shocked for a moment, hey, seal of lands, could you do something about it? Why would you just let it draw my celestial powers like this? With another glance using his magical instincts, he saw that stars were sparkling in the flames inside the gourd. Forget it, the rate of absorption was not even as fast as his self-recovery. The fight was easily won and there were rich rewards, Lu Xu was very satisfied. With regard to surrendering his spoils. Well, impossible. Did the great man not say? We are from the general public and back to the general public. What are we supposed to do? To return the resources taken by bandits from the public back to the public. That was right. Lu Xu was the people. Because of his childhood in the orphanage, he had never joined the Young Pioneers nor the Communist Youth League. On his document application form, he could only fill in general public as his political affiliation. Who could say he was not a member of the general public? Thus, Lu Xu had no qualms about privatizing his spoils. Everyone had rules to follow. Due to the terrifying incident, Lu Xu had accumulated more than 20,000 distress points during the killing. Indeed, he had killed too fast. With great difficulty, Wang Li's team managed to get rid of those middle-aged women. Until the end, Wang Li did not dare to eat the bowl of stewed noodles. Actually, they could have rejected them with brute force, but it would not have been nice to beat those who came to serve you with stewed noodles. In fact, at that time Lu Xu had paid 300 yuan, which was by six get one free. Even the two girls were not spared. When the woman brought two bowls of noodles to Hisia and Lu Xu Eruo's room, she also hesitated for a while. How come it was two girls? It does not matter. Girls it is then. What circumstances were unfamiliar to those women? When they finally broke free and hurried to their target location, they agreed to investigate the situation first. Hence, two boys would go in first with one magical stone, while the rest would wait outside until further notice. Not long after the two had entered, they called, Come in. Quick. The place reeked of blood, 
and bodies with twisted necks were sprawled all over the floor. They had never seen something so creepy before. The geniuses could not help but vomit at the disgusting scene in front of them. After a while, they finally got back on their feet again and looked at one another at a loss. How did they die? It doesn't look like an internal conflict. They checked against their mission information and it appeared none of the 17 targets had survived. And the key point was, someone had obviously killed all 17 of them on the spot instead of one by one. How many people would that need? Could it be a gang? If so, who were they? Chapter 355, Missing Persons Poster Wang Li searched the room for any clues, but was immediately stunned by the graffiti on the walls. It seemed that the person wanted to carve a Batman symbol at first, but somehow it was cancelled. Then he seemed unsatisfied with his next work, and cancelled it again. Thus, about five to six symbols were carved and cancelled, almost occupying the entire wall. It appeared that the person was determined to leave his mark, but was not happy with any of his drafts. In the end, Wang Li found an intact symbol in the corner, it was a standard circle with two words inside, general public. Wang Li? Wang Li was confused, who the hell was, general public? Also, could you please start carving after you have decided what you wanted? I can understand your Batman and Superman symbols, but what's with your Leia Gamma Chili in oil and Wang Shui condiment logos? Was it to show off your drawing skills? Actually Lu Xu did self-learn sketching before, and had planned to make a living by helping others draw portraits, if selling eggs did not work out. Wang Li's groupmates were equally shocked at the sight, so is our mission considered complete or not? Why don't we just say we did it by ourselves? Then what if the Heavenly Kings ask us about the magical weapons in the black market? Taken by the public? Isn't it true that it's taken by the general public? We are telling the truth. The seven of them were dumbstruck and wondered who was that damned person who stole their business. They had expected the mission to be challenging and that dangerous situations might arise, but never could they have predicted this. Instead of rushing to Tongguan directly, the general public Lu Xu returned to Luocheng first. At that time, Lu Xiaoyu had long since accumulated enough anger points in Lu Xu's 20 days of running away from home, and it seemed she was about to throw out some high-powered skills anytime. Indeed, Lu Xiaoyu used running away from home to describe Lu Xu's progress report in the capital. In any case, Gongyi was only half an hour away from Luo Cheng. Thus, Lu Xu deemed it as totally justifiable to prioritize his trip home. Earlier in Gongyi, he did not notice any signs of him being tracked, and in fact, Nia Ting had already left the capital on the 17th day of their training. Nia Ting had multiple roles to play. In addition to being the person in charge of the Heavenly Network and the Capital Daoyuan class, he would also be the bodyguard to significant figures when they were overseas for visits. Lu Xu could sense that Lu Xiaoyu might explode any time now. Hence, without calming her down, he would not be able to focus on his tasks at hand. Moreover, without a stipulated deadline, Chen Zuan and the rest would certainly wait for him at Tongguan, but Xiaoyu's anger eruption might be well within these two days. He messaged Xiaoyu but did not receive a reply, it was only followed by a spate of increases in distress points in the background. Judging from the rapid growth in the distress points alone, Lu Xu could already foresee himself having a hard time today. At that moment, one had to act poor. Hence, Lu Xu bombarded Lu Xiaoyu with complaints about the toughness of the training and the danger of the fight just now. As for whether it was indeed that tough or dangerous, he himself was the only one that needed to know. Just now. Finally, Lu Xiaoyu replied, Have you eaten? Lu Xu's face lit up, not yet. I'm reaching soon. What do we have at home? A cute little girl who was abandoned at home. Lu Xu? Was that the way to reply? Fine, I admit you are cute, okay. Then, Lu Xu managed to buy some food before he went back, as going home without bringing anything did not seem like a nice thing to do. But once he reached the gate of Xingxu Road Yard, he suddenly saw a sheet of a four-print pasted on the pole. 
A closer inspection revealed, missing person, Lu Xu, 17 years old, with weird-looking blue hair. His personal trait is being very mean. Currently, he has abandoned his cute little sister at home and run away. If anyone sees him, please tell him that he no longer needs to come home if he's still not home tomorrow. Lu Xu froze at once. How come there was a missing persons poster? After 20 plus days of progress report at the capital, why had he become a missing person? Obviously it was for himself to see. Moreover, others would offer rewards for those with clues, but why did it become a farewell message for him? Lu Xu shot another look at the date, fine, it was yesterday. Below it there were traces of torn paper, it seemed she would replace it every day. Each day, she would say he was no longer needed if he was not home the next day, but she still extended the deadline over and over again. Luckily, Lu Xu's hair had already turned black completely. He quickly removed the poster and hurried home. As soon as he opened the door, he saw Lu Xiaoyu sat by the table, with a cold expression on her face. A bowl of egg soup noodles with tomatoes was steaming on the table. Lu Xiaoyu's voice was frosty, e. Lu Xu smiled. In spite of her anger, she still cooked noodles for him. No wonder she used to pester Auntie Lu with requests to teach her cooking. It was for a day like this, when he was back home, she could prepare a bowl of noodles with soup instead of cup noodles. Little Fury had hidden in some secret corner because it was not a suitable occasion for him to be present. It was not that it might disturb their sibling reunion, but more of the fear that it might accidentally get hurt. Its little brother had already notified it when Lu Xu reached the yard gate. Lu Xu placed the plastic bag in his hands onto the table, a new phone for you. Didn't you always complain about the screen of your old phone? In the past, both of their phones were cheap and of low quality. They were good enough for daily use, but were not up to standard for games and movies. Lu Xiaoyu mused for two minutes and asked calmly, Where's my TV box? Lu Xu occupied himself with eating noodles, maybe Little Fury stole it? Nice try. From Lu Xiaoyu's distress, plus 999. However, she did not continue the topic. Instead, she spoke in a calm manner, If you were still not home by tomorrow, I was really going to go to the capital to find you. Don't ever leave me alone at home for so long again. I'm scared of the darkness when I'm home alone. Her words shot a pang in Lu Xu's heart. After all, Lu Xiaoyu was only a ten-year-old girl. Wait a minute, she did not seem scared at all when watching The Grudge last time? When they watched horror movies together, Lu Xu had always been squeezing his eyes, as though he would miss those horrifying scenes like that. But Lu Xiaoyu was different. It seemed that she had born without the fear of darkness or ghosts. Tricks. Those were all tricks. At that moment, something suddenly struck Lu Xu's mind, did you manage to materialize the class B spirit? It would be troublesome for him to run around reaping military credits. But if it was Anthony, who could travel through the earth and fight in wherever place he wanted, was it not a powerful tool? What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know Glass half full or empty And we just put them on the show Try to look to the heavens